Welcome to Gate Depot's online gate installation video library. This video shows the professional installation of an uphill swing gate with a top mounted swing arm gate operator. Prior to starting your gate installation, call Underground Service Alert for your area. It is a free service that marks all of the underground utility lines around your construction site. This will prevent severing of gas, water, and electrical lines, which can be very costly, dangerous, and possibly fatal. After locating the position of the gate, outline the post holes with marking paint. All post holes should be square. Round holes will loosen over time. Check your soil conditions. If soil is fairly dense and compacted, an 18 to 24 inch square hole, three to four feet deep, will be sufficient for most gates. If the soil is loose, loamy, sandy, or contains clay, you should consider using outriggers. After the hole is dug, place a small flat paver or other flat masonry on the bottom of the hole. A couple of bricks will do as well. The post and any other metal should not touch the bottom of the hole. Mark and dig the connecting trench from the gate to the operator pad. Locate the operator position according to the manufacturer's specifications. Outline the gate operator pad with marking paint. Dig the gate operator pad to factory specs. Many people make the operator pad too small, ignoring factory specifications. This can be a serious mistake. Set the concrete form in position and place stakes at the corners. Make sure that the form is square by measuring corner to corner, making sure both measurements are equal. Then level the form on its edges and crosswise. After the form is leveled, screw the stakes to the form. Cut off any excessive post length, making sure that you are left with at least 36 inches of post depth below grade. Place the post in the hole on top of the masonry block that you placed earlier. Drive stakes into the ground to hold the braces for leveling the post. The braces can be metal or wood and welded or clamped on. Set the height and rough level of the hinge post. On professional installations, it is typical to use a laser leveling device. Use a lever to assist with setting the post height. After leveling the stop post, set the distance between the posts using a tape measure. Measure both the top and the bottom to ensure that the posts are parallel. Using a string level, square the posts to each other. Insert a rebar cage or weld rebar to the posts. When the operator is installed at the same time as the posts, it is preferred to reinforce the concrete with rebar between the post and operator pad. Next, install all necessary conduit rows. Mix and pour the concrete. Trowel the concrete surface of the operator pad. Check your posts for level and then make any final adjustments. Clean any concrete splatters off of finished surfaces. Let the concrete set for a minimum of three days. Once the cement has cured, hang the gate using 2x4 levers as necessary. Make sure you have the appropriate number of laborers to safely handle the gate. In this instance, the gate has an offset hinge for an uphill driveway installation. To arrive at the offset needed, divide the gate width by the gate height. This will give you the ratio of offset to rise. For example, a 14 foot gate divided by a five foot height equals 2.8. So for every one inch of offset, you will get 2.8 inches of rise at the end of the gate. Bolt the hinges to the post using stainless steel bolts and washers. 
Level the gate using 2x4 levers. Go slightly past level to compensate for post deflection due to the heavy weight of the gate. A good rule of thumb is to let the bubble of the level touch the line on the high side. Make any final adjustments and then tighten the hinges down. Test the swing of the gate to make sure that it moves freely. Mount the operator to the concrete pad using wedge anchor bolts. Install the radio receiver. On some operators you can screw the receiver on. On others you may need to use double sided tape. Twist the power leads together, then twist the relay output leads. Wire into the control box. Whenever possible, use rubber grommets in the knockout holes before passing the wire through. Install an external antenna kit, keeping it away from metal objects to avoid interference. Installations where the antenna rises above the metal posts are okay. Install the cables to the antenna, making sure to use weatherproof boots supplied with the antenna kit. Fasten the cable run to the gate operator. Connect the antenna cable to the receiver. Install the crank arm assembly over the drive shaft. Set the crank arm length according to the manufacturer's specs relating to gate length and degree of open angle. This may also relate to the operator position. Use a 4 or 6 foot level to determine the gate mounting position of the operator arm. Mark the position for the gate arm spreader bracket. Cut the gate arm spreader bracket to span a minimum of three stakes. Clamp the bracket to the gate in the required position. Level the spreader bracket and weld to the gate. Adjust and tighten the arm assembly. Weld the operator arm pivot point to the spreader bracket. In this instance, because this is an uphill installation, the gate arm is articulated with gimbaled joints. Check the motion of the gate and adjust the arm if necessary. Make course adjustments to the limit switches to determine the open and closed position. Finally, attach access control and safety devices and place warning signs on the gate. 